Hello everyone and welcome to part one of my WWF No Mercy Light Heavyweight Championship run. Um, part one of eventually what's going to be six videos of me completing all the different paths to take in order to get 100% in the Light Heavyweight Championship. I'm going to go through all the titles eventually. As you saw just there, I scrolled through the titles real quick to show you that every single one is 0%. I resetted my game for the love of you guys. <laughs> I did 100% uh, No Mercy a um, long time ago. But um, for these videos, you know, I got to start from scratch. So I have to erase everything, which is no big deal. This was actually a... Um, a, a a copy I got at a used game store recently. It's not my original, original WWF No Mercy game, but um, you know, it gets the job done. I am playing on an N Nintendo 64, I'm capturing it with an Elgato, and I am recording on my new uh, Blue Snowball mic, which I got for Christmas, which is gonna help me create these Let's Play videos. If you've been watching my channel already, I've been putting up just regular playthroughs of um, my title runs in WCW NWO Revenge. And they've been fun to watch. I mean, I like watching them over and over again. Uh, but that's because I have an appreciation and love of these games. Um, but people might not be as familiar with these games as I am. And I really do feel like I have a lot, a lot of knowledge and experience playing these games. And I want to share that. I want to share my love and passion for WCW NW Revenge, for WWF No Mercy. Um, I want to do some videos on Virtual Pro Wrestling 2, which I know a lot of people probably aren't aware of, uh, but it's a game that came out before WWF No Mercy, and it was developed by AKI and Asmic Ace, as well as um, WCW vs. NWO World Tour, WrestleMania 2000, and Virtual Pro Wrestling 64, which I've never played. I've never played Virtual Pro Wrestling 64. Um, so I will eventually try to hunt down a copy of that on eBay and do videos of that as well. So yeah, this is the first in the series where I'm doing a quote-unquote let's play because I'm actually going to talk about um, w my gameplay here. Um, and this is WWF No Mercy Light Heavyweight Championship. So, in order to 100% these um, titles, you have to do different paths. And it can be quite complicated, and I wouldn't recommend doing it just on your own, trying to figure out what's the easiest path to get to. So do what I did, and I did this long time ago when I first got this game. Go to GameFAQs, and there's a great guide by Jabroni Kenshin. Um, he's at Jabroni Kenshin at msn.com. I doubt that <laughs> email is still valid. But this is the guide I used way back in the day, back in, you know, late 2000. You know, I bought this game when it first came out, which was in uh, uh, um, November of 2000, uh, which was about 14 years ago. Um, and the guide that I'm using basically breaks it down, it has quick path links. So you can see, um, you know, what's the fastest route in order to complete a path and then move on to the next one. And you have the least amount of intersecting paths. So with the light heavyweight championship, it's the second shortest championship you can do. It only has six paths. Um, and I say second shortest because the women's championship is actually the shortest. Now the women's championship has six paths as well, but you only have to do five matches each path. The light heavyweight championship has six matches each path. So first up, I'm starting with S.A. Rios. As you can see, the match is already well underway. Uh, it's a four-way elimination match to determine the number one contender. <laughs> I actually really dug this championship mode. Um, you know. It, it really focused on letting you get out there and just playing matches over and over again and they throw in different type of matches but the storyline that they try to weave into a lot of these paths actually reflect a lot of the storylines that were going on in WWE slash WWF at the time 
Now the light heavyweight championship, um, not as I would say, not as prestigious as say the WCW cruiserweight championship, but it did have a few highlights. Um, SA Rios. The reason why I chose SA Rios is because um, you know the way I want to do these championship runs is I want to play with the people who had the longest you know reigns as champions. So I did a little research, and SA Rios was light heavyweight champion only once. He held the title for 29 days. That actually puts him as the sixth. Well, technically seventh longest reigning um, light heavyweight champion. And the reason why I say technically seventh is because the longest reigning light heavyweight champion, uh, according to WWE slash WWF, isn't in the game. And that's Gilbert. <laughs> yes, Gilbert was the longest reigning WWF light heavyweight champion. Um, he defeated Christian. To get the title when Christian was still part of um, the brood that's how long ago this was uh, <laughs> and um, he held the championship for 453 days now there is a history before the you know Gilbert Gilbert came along and dominated as the light heavyweight champion um, the belt was actually created for a Mexican promotion called UWA, which is the Universal Wrestling Association. It's a promotion in Mexico, and I, you know, I don't know why, but WWF decided, hey, we're gonna create a light heavyweight belt, and part of our relationship with Mexico, and you know, Mexican wrestling, I should say, and this, this promotion is, you know, we're gonna give them a title, and they can use the title. You know, things were different back then. You, you had a lot of that. You had a lot of titles being loaned out to different promotions. I mean, the biggest one, of course, is the NWA Championship, which were the NWA champion um, was the champion, but he went across all the different promotions under the NWA banner and defended the titles, you know, at those different uh, regions. Um, so WWF Light Heavyweight Championship was kind of a loaned title when it was first created, and it was at um, and the UWA had it from 1981 to 1995 so if you're going by the official um, rankings of top champions and, and you're taking into account the um, history of the UWA then uh, Viano number three is the longest reigning uh, WWF light heavyweight champion with a combined reign of 231 days and that's spread over seven, seven different title reigns. So he was champion seven different times. And altogether, if you add up his total days as champion, it's 2,031. No, this information isn't from my brain. This information is from Wikipedia. And what a sweet flipping um, her Karana from the top rope. I love, that's one of my favorite specials from this game. SA Rios has a really good move pool in this game. Um, which reflects how good he was actually I mean he really was a, a good um, wrestler really good high flyer had a really long career after he left the WWE um, but his his tenure in the light heavyweight division wasn't very you know rich I guess you could say and that's partly the fault of WWE in my opinion um, I don't think they took the light heavyweight division seriously. I mean, the fact that they used Gilbert, you know, to, to kind of poke fun at Goldberg, they made this character Gilbert, who is this scrawny, bald headed guy. Obviously, they were riffing on Goldberg. This was during the, the Monday Night Wars and the Attitude Era. And so, to, to make fun of the streak, they had Gilbert come out, and he he was a jobber essentially, but he was a dominant jobber, and that was how they made fun of Goldberg. And so they had to put a title on him, and they actually put a real title on him. They put the light heavyweight, an actual title that had a lot of prestige and respect in Mexico and in Japan for a long time before it came to the WWF. And Taka Michinoku was the first WWF light heavyweight champion. He won it in a tournament. Um, 
at WWF Degeneration X in your house in December 7th of 1997. All right, so I'm bouncing around a lot, a little bit. This is bear with me. This is my first Let's Play video where I'm recording. I have a lot of information I want to talk about, mostly with these videos for um, you know No Mercy and Later Revenge and Virtual Pro Wrestling 2. I want to talk about the gameplay, but I also want to talk about the historical context of these games. Um, WWF No Mercy was released in November 17th of 2000, and WrestleMania 2000, the game preceding it, was released in October 31st, 1999. So when I'm playing as these wrestlers, I'm gonna try to focus on the time between the, that year, those those dates rather. So about a year between WrestleMania 2000 and WWF No Mercy, because WWF No Mercy was being developed right after WrestleMania 2000, and it's interesting to see the changes that occur. Uh, with a lot of the wrestlers by the time the game came out. S.A. Rios is a great example. Um, he was light heavyweight champion, like I said, for um, one month. Uh, when you first play the game, as you can see right now, I'm having a match with D. Malenko, and the storyline for this one is, um, you know, this is the title match, and Eddie Guerrero just interfered. You always have someone interfere um, it changes sometimes depending on who you wrestle. Obviously, if you choose Eddie Guerrero, Eddie Guerrero is not going to come out. Um, so that's kind of cool too with the championship paths, how they do that, how they adjust the wrestlers. Uh, and D. Malenko was actually the light heavyweight champion during the time of WWF No Mercy. So they got that right. That's accurate. But when No Mercy came out, S.A. Reels was pretty much nowhere to be found. I mean, he was barely on TV anymore at that point. If he was, he was probably making appearances on Sunday Night Heat. Um, but he first captured his light heavyweight championship um, by beating Gilbert, the dominant light heavyweight champion who probably didn't defend the title for all those days he probably they just probably stuck it on him for a few episodes forgot about it and then saw hey you know what we want to reintroduce S.A. Rios let's let's give him a title when we reintroduce him so we can give him some momentum so he beat Gilbert for the title on um, February 13th of 2000 so sort of in the beginning of the year of the year 2000 a few months away from um, No Mercy's release uh, when he was reintroduced as S.A. Rios, uh, you might be aware that he originally was in WWF as Aguila. And uh, he wore a mask. He kind of looked like Psychosis. Just a, like a really colorful Psychosis. I believe he did take off the mask at one point, although I could be making that up. I got. I should have look, looked that up before doing this video. Um, but he actually wrestled against Taka Michinoku as Aguila at WrestleMania 14 for the Light Heavyweight Championship. So he definitely had a lot of bouts for the Light Heavyweight title, but his reign was short-lived. He only held the title for 29 days after um, winning it from Gilbert, and he lost it actually to D. Malenko. So it's kind of fitting that you know I chose him first to go up against D. Malenko. Um, and he actually, you know, changes history by beating the like, Whatever, I like to make my own storylines when I play these games. Um, I don't know if you saw earlier at the beginning of the video, and I forgot to mention this, but I'm playing on expert difficulty. Though if No Mercy is not that hard, in my opinion. Here I go, I go for the... Oh, yeah, see, that's weird. <laughs> I'm going to do this a lot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut what I'm saying with observations of the gameplay. His special coming off the top rope is that flipping senton and his regular top rope move is the very moonsault that he had um and i always thought that was weird but it also helps because like if i ever want to go for that moonsault as his finisher and i don't have a special i can go for it anytime so whatever so on to chapter three the first path is always very simple usually you just have to win every match so right now you know I'm going through all these matches and the goal is just to win there's no special set criteria um, for the light heavyweight 
championships first path sometimes you'll have in the different paths you'll see later on um you know like a uh, perfect example is the wf light you know heavyweight title where i think your first or second match is the royal rumble and there's like three different outcomes depending on how you do that obviously the main one is to win it and then win all the rest of the matches but you know there's one where like you know lose it uh, eliminate 15 people i believe is like the third option so this one's pretty straightforward you know um just win all the matches it's also pretty fitting that eddie guerrero is the guy i'm sort of semi feuding with because um after after sa rios lost his light heavyweight title um uh, he started a brief tag team and then eventually a feud with eddie guerrero uh, when S.A. Rios was reintroduced from being Gila to S.A. Rios, uh, he was accompanied to the ring by Lita, who we all know, Lita. Lita eventually joining the Hardy Boys and Team Extreme and having all those great matches with Trish Stratus. And, but Lita was um, his sort of like companion to the ring. Um, and she was called Lita. And... It's it's actually it's I didn't know the history about it until later on and until recently actually but Lita trained in Mexico so that's probably why they stuck her with S A Rios when she first came into the company um, if you listen to I highly recommend you listen to the Jim Ross podcast and the Stone Cold podcast but Lita has episodes on both of them and she goes into detail about her upbringing and. How she got involved with wrestling and she basically just went down to mexico and got them to train her by just showing up all the time and and showing them that she was very serious and to be a female wrestler who's like no i'm really you know serious about getting into the ring that was kind of um not rare because you know women wrestling has been had been around for a while but at least that style you didn't see someone trying to embrace like the lucha libre style or the high flying style that lita did so it's kind of cool looking back on it that she did start out with S.A. Rios uh, because that really did um, connect with her roots as being trained uh, in Mexico. So her and Lita, him and Lita I should say, came in together and um, she would help him in a lot of the matches but then you know a lot of the times her moonsault would miss and hit the wrong person. <laughs> So that's actually what happened um, between her and um, Eddie Guerrero a lot of the times. When S.A. Rios and Eddie Guerrero were, were in these tag matches, she would fly off the moonsault and uh, hit Eddie Guerrero. And then China would get upset and beat her up. Um, so Eddie Guerrero and S.A. Rios actually fought for Eddie's European title at Backlash on April 30th. 2000 now why am i uh talking about all these dates and pay-per-views and everything like that well it's so you can go watch them on the wwe network i'm a big fan of the wwe network and it's it's a rabbit hole of wrestling you can get lost there for hours and hours watching old clips seeing rare appearances by certain wrestlers or wrestlers you might have forgotten about or wrestlers that you love that you wish you know would come back or you know or sad to see them retire uh, there's not a lot of stuff on S.A. Rios, but there is quite a bit of his tag matches with Eddie Guerrero leading up to the Backlash pay-per-view. Um, there's no there's no title defenses or championship matches with S.A. Rios as the champion on the WWE Network because a lot of those um, appearances were on Sunday Night Heat. After he fought Eddie Guerrero um, at No Way um, at No Way Out, the next pay-per-view, he um, no, I'm sorry. That's wrong. After, after, after he, uh, I'm looking at my notes. I'm sorry. I have them backwards. After he beat, Eddie, after he um, feuded with Eddie Guerrero and lost to Eddie Guerrero, uh, the next pay per view that he appeared at was Judgment Day, and um, him and Lita were in a tag team match against Kai and Tai. Now this was a match at the beginning of the pay per view, but didn't actually air at the pay per view Judgment Day. It was taped um, for Sunday Night Heat. And WWE did that a lot for Sunday Night Heat. And they do that now with main event. I believe their main event matches, though, are, are, are taped on Raws. Um, so when you're watching WWE main event, you're actually watching um, 
you know, matches that are starting at the beginning of Raws but don't make the Raw taping. So that's what happened a lot to Eddie um, SA Reels, you know. And then after Judgment Day, um, that was pretty much the last time him and Lita were as a team. And you know, Lita skyrocketed. She joined the Hardy Boys, and they blew up. And at the next pay per view, King of the Ring in June. Alita was with the Hardy Boys, and they were in a four-team elimination match for the tag titles. And S.A. Rios uh, was in another taping for Sunday Night Heat, where he beat Stevie Richards. And then the next pay-per-view he was at was fully loaded in July, where he lost to Taka Michinoku for another TV taping. And and then that's it. No more no more pay-per-view appearances. So if you look at the time frame. And this is the historical context I wanted to get to. If you look at the time frame, S.A. Rios was pretty much out of the company before um, WWF No Mercy came out. Um, you know, and that happens a lot with, with these wrestling games. And even today, you'll see wrestlers in the game or factions in the game when the factions have split up or the teams have split up or the gimmicks have changed. Uh, so S.A. Rios, sadly, uh, one of the few light, you know, true, I would say, light heavyweight competitors in the WWF wasn't even part of the company anymore by the time No Mercy came out. He was back working in Mexico. Lita was on to bigger and better things. And it's funny because Lita and S.A. Rios have the same entrance in this game. Or sort of the same entrance. Their, their entrance, um, it's a companion to one another. They do a taunt where they point at each other, and that was like kind of the thing. They pointed at each other when they came to the ring. So it's really funny to see that because if you look at the time frame, you know, by by June, Lita was with the Hardy Boys. Like, you know, late June. So that's about you know, June, July, October. June, July, <laughs> August, September, October. That's about four or five months before No Mercy came out. And they didn't go back and change it. So that says a lot about video game development. About how late it can be to try to change something that's already in there. Or maybe they just didn't have the time to go in and change it. Because it's very interesting what wrestlers appear in this game. And I'll talk about that in a lot of other people's runs. Um, and how their gimmicks have changed. And how some were a lot closer to No Mercy than others. Um, and there I am beating... Grandmaster Sexy easily, one, two, three. Like I was saying earlier, now I'm going to talk a lot about the gameplay, even though I probably have like one or two matches left, but I wanted to talk about S.A. Reels because I'm probably never going to play as him again in any of these ch championship runs, and I really did enjoy him being at um, in the WWF. He probably would have fared much better in the WCW Cruiserweight division, but honestly, by this time, by the 2000s, the WCW Cruiserweight division was a shell of its former self also, uh, but the, the Cruiserweight title was definitely more prestigious than the WF title, in my opinion, and probably in WWF's opinion, because when they bought WCW and they were like merging all the titles, they called, you know, the WWE Light Heavyweight, when they merged the WWF Light Heavyweight and the WCW Cruiserweight, they turned it into the WWE Cruiserweight because I think they wanted to keep that association with how good the WCW Cruiserweight division was. And Dean Malenko uh, carrying the title in this game, he was also a great WCW Cruiserweight champion briefly. Um, but anyways, alright, so, th so the gameplay, let's talk a little bit about the gameplay um, in regards to, you know, what's going on right here I'm playing on the expert difficulty I'm gonna be playing on expert difficulty for all my videos and if you've watched my WCW NWO revenge videos it's all been on the, the hardest difficulty in, in that game I think it's just called hard I don't think it's called expert but in this game it's called expert and you know this match is a perfect example of this is probably the hardest it'll get you know playing on expert in no mercy. Um, the AI isn't too difficult, and the reason is because the the gameplay is just so solid. They really fixed a lot of the inconsistencies with the AI from the previous games, where they could get a, a what I call a comeback special very easily, where their meter rises very fast for no reason or what seems like no reason. But I do have a theory on why that is that I'll probably explain in another video. Um, you know, you don't have to have their meters all the way down to, to really secure a pinfall like you did in Revenge. 
um, you know, submissions is a lot easier. You could actually knock people out with submissions if if submissions is turned off in this game, which can help you for like cage matches and ladder matches. It, you know, buys you more time. So there's a lot of tools to help you dominate really in this game if you're good at it. And it doesn't take too long to get good at it because the gameplay is so simple. You have your A button to grab and you know A and B are both you know grapple moves once you once you're grappling someone to do your special is really simple you just strong grapple which is basically holding down the A button and then you hit your control stick which I'm doing now and I got Grandmaster Sexy down and I'm going for the pin on Guerrero but I didn't damage Guerrero enough now even though his meter is all the way in danger they really they really still wanted you to give a lot of damage to these characters um, so you do kinda have to beat them up quite a bit um, if you wanna if you wanna put the matches away pretty fast which isn't too hard when you're doing one-on-one -on -one. but in handicap matches like this you know when you're constantly changing you know who you're facing and the moves you're doing it can be kind of tedious and, and take a little longer than a standard one-on-one -on -one match so what I'm doing here is I'm just switching back and forth. I like to try to keep them together. I don't like to be cornered or, you know, sandwiched by my opponents when I'm doing handicap match matches on Expert because I would say handicap matches, cage matches, and ladder matches are the three types of matches that can really run away from you when you're playing on Expert. Um, that's really when the AI is at at an advantage and will give you the most difficulty but besides that all the other match types the four-way dances the singles matches the tag matches the computer is really easy in my opinion uh, obviously I've been playing this game forever I feel like I've never stopped playing it in the 14 years that it's been out I always find myself coming back to no mercy um, because the gameplay is so strong and, and I'm a big wrestling fan to boot too and, I do feel like it's one of the best wrestling games ever made, ma mainly because of the engine. Um, you know, the engine being so simple and you can do a lot to it and there's a lot of complexity there. Obviously if the series was able to keep going, they would have probably improved the AI to make it a little bit more difficult, but you know what, I don't mind. At least it makes it easier for me to record these videos because I'm not constantly resetting because I'm losing. Also in the championship mode you have retries anyway, so I don't really stress it out if I lose too much. Um, and I'll, I'll try not to lose much <laughs> when I'm doing these videos, but, uh, you know, it's going to happen every once in a while. I'm pretty sure during a cage match or a ladder match, you'll see me lose because you'll see how easy it is for the computer to win. And I'll talk about those types of matches uh, when we get to them. Right now, you know, what you want to do in a handicap match, in my opinion, is you want to, you know, do one move to a guy and then move on to the other guy. So if you, if you notice, I'll hit... Guerrero with something and then I'll hit Grandmaster Sexy with something and then I'll go back to Guerrero and then I'll go back to Sexy and if I want to create some space I'll throw the guy out the ring or I'll throw him into the corner uh, I try not to run away I try not to use cheesy tactics unless I'm really desperate and it's very rare that I'm put in a position where I have to do so but see right here I'm trying to create some space because Eddie Guerrero is getting on top of me and I need to get my meter up because I'm so close to a special so I'm just trying to create some space here um, and and that's what I liked about the lightweight wrestlers is that their moves were fast and quick and you could pull off a really cool move really fast um, I go for a pin there probably because I didn't know I was going for a pin and then I ended up winning the game <laughs> and see and, and that something like that probably wouldn't have flied in WCW NWO Revenge or Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 where the AI would just look at you and just like, yeah, I'm just going to let him pin right there. Um, so, again, it's, it's not that hard on Expert, but it can slip away from you um, sometimes. So there I did, I, 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 you know, storyline-wise, I took care of Guerrero and Sexy, the two biggest, you know, other contenders for the Light Heavyweight Championship. Brian Christopher actually was um, in the tournament final against Taka Michinoku when they reintroduced the light heavyweight championship. 
but he never held the title. And Eddie Guerrero was never light heavyweight champion either. So it's it's really interesting who they throw in in these storyline paths, um, who they have you wrestle a lot, because a lot of the guys, you know, probably contended for the title. But I th- I just think it's funny that they throw Eddie Guerrero in the light heavyweight championship path when when he was introduced in WWE, he, he rarely wrestled with the light heavyweight guys. And if he did, like when he wrestled S.A. Rios, it was for, you know, the European title or other championships. Um, you know, him and Eddie Guerrero, um, Rey Mysterio had bouts, but you, you didn't necessarily call them cruiserweight bouts like, like you did in WCW when they wrestled together. So here we're at a ladder match. And now the ladder match is... The difficult thing about ladder matches when playing against the computer on the hardest difficulty setting is that it's really easy for them to A, set up the ladder because they set it up perfect every single time and I've tested this <laughs> 14 years of testing and they still do it they still set up the ladder perfectly every single time so if you actually want to set up the ladder perfectly I say let the computer do it because pretty much like about a minute into the match they'll start going after the ladder and you'll see really quickly that Dean Malenko, once he he's able to get a move off, uh, if I let him, and you know I don't really remember if I was able to let him to, to to go after the ladder in this one, but they will go after the ladder much faster than you probably would. See, look, he's gonna he countered me there, and no, he's not going. Oh, he's throwing me out the ring, and now he's gonna start making his way to the ladder. See, that the AI will will start going to the to the ladder as soon as possible. I think it's because they can climb the ladder insanely fast. Um, so you know, it, it, it can be really, really difficult in these ladder matches um, because if they do start climbing the ladder, you have to get them down as fast as possible, which usually means running into the ladder um, and, and and doing a strong, you know attack into the ladder or sometimes if you're playing as a high flyer you know like I, how I did that springboard drop kick um, that also can knock them off the ladder or a move from the turnbuckle just make sure if you're doing a move from the turnbuckle your guy can jump far because not everyone can jump far and hit the ladder um, so there's Di Malenko trying to bring the ladder in I'm not too worried about it I got him down but it, but you know on the flip side the, the thing that determines how fast you grab the ladder, I mean, how fast you grab the belt in these ladder matches is your spirit meter. So the, the higher your spirit meter is, the, e- the faster you're going to be at taking the belt down. Um, and it's sort of the same mechanic in, in the cage match. The higher your spirit meter is, the faster you can go over the cage. No matter how hard you press that button, and, and you still have to press it really hard, you still have to press the A button really hard to, to climb over the cage or climb the ladder and, and grab the belt, it's really going to help if you have a high spirit meter. So the, the, the trick is you want to wear down your compu- the computer opponent enough so that when you finally do hit your special, he stays down long enough for you to climb the ladder and grab the belt. That's the easiest way to win the ladder match. Of course, timing is everything. So you see here, I'm trying to I'm trying to create some space so I can set up the ladder because I see my special is coming. And you know, I'm biding my time. I've been pounding on Malenko quite a bit, <laughs> you know, in this match. And um, so hopefully, you know, when I get him down, he stays down. And Again, it could be it, it could be one of those matches that get away from you because if you do let the computer get some momentum going and then put the pressure to you and keep you down for a while, they don't need to hit their special on you to climb the ladder. They can just start climbing wherever they damn well choose and get up there and then automatically get it. Um, so here I am. I'm going. I'm gonna climb the ladder. He's down. I hit him with my special. I'm in good position with the ladder. You want to try to get the shadow right under the ladder. And there I go, I'm tapping, I'm tapping, and boom, got the ladder. See, it was much faster because already when I started doing the tapping, I was still in the special. So I still have that special meter carryover. So that's it. That's SA Rios. Really easy, really quick. Six matches. Um, next up, I'm going to be playing as Christian. And uh, I actually do a really cool thing with Christian. 
I um, put him in his brood gimmick because that's what he wore when uh, he won the title um, from Taka Michinoku, the first champion. And um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, and subscribe, and see you next time. Oh, well, actually, it's not done yet. <laughs> I prematurely exited. <laughs> this is my first video doing these Let's Plays. I'm going to, you know, fix it up and make it be make them better as I go forward. But I have ton, ton of videos to do if I'm going to do all the championship paths. So they're only going to get better, more inter interesting. I'm going to have more facts, more trivia, uh, more commentary on wrestling itself. So, yeah. So I hope you did enjoy. And like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you next time.